Good morning and welcome to Friday Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll free number 800 9510592, the website at allamericangold.com. Sit back, relax, strap on the seatbelt, leave the driving to us, and put a couple fingers of Jack in the coffee on this Friday. I hope it finds all of you well. A uh, special day today. Uh, I asked Jason uh, to join us. For, uh, he runs our Colorado office. Uh, does a great job up there. Take care, care of uh, everybody on the front range. And Jason, welcome to the program and happy Friday, brother. Uh, this is. Uh, I always like joining the uh, Arizona audience once in a while. It's just uh, kind of fun because I know you guys have uh, been doing this uh, a long time up there. And uh, I th- definitely, I think there's a difference. I haven't met a lot of the Arizona people, but uh, I think there's a different vibe down here. And I think it's kind of cool to jump on Arizona with you and. You know, we got different weather. We're at 57 degrees uh, over here, uh, Joe. Where, what are you at over there? Uh, I think we're we're going to cool down today. I think it's going to be like 106. So <laughs> we're going to get up to 80, I think. But uh, right now, it's a nice, cool morning. Yeah, you know what? It, it is actually. Uh, you know, I get up about five o'clock in the morning. It's beautiful out at, at five in the morning here. It's in the probably, probably I would say the low to mid 70s where I live uh, early in the morning. Uh, super, super nice, but you know we're we're we're, we're close. Couple more weeks. I keep saying a couple more weeks. Couple more weeks, and then uh, when when we get below a hundred degrees here in the valley, it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and and I just it's been a long hot summer. And I know everybody out there. We're all ready uh, for fall to get here. I don't know that you can really say Arizona has a winter, uh, but uh, we are waiting patiently. For, for the big break in the weather here. Uh, hasn't happened yet, like I said, today. Uh, only going to be like 106, and I think for the next three or four days it's going to get a little cool, like 103, 102, something like that. So we're we're almost there. Hang in there. Uh, what a crazy, crazy week it's been. Uh, gold's rallying today. Uh, I thought we would rally uh, yesterday, and we didn't. We had the pullback yesterday. Gold rallying back up today. We're kind of right where we were. Before the Fed meeting. So you'll go back to Tuesday. Uh, gold's at 1955. Silver's just over $27. And today is one of these things. It's, it's quadruple witching. Uh, you got all these programs and all that stuff. The stocks sell off and everyone's squaring their books for the end of the quarter and, and all of those things. I say stocks sell. They don't have to sell off. They can do, you go up to two. But they're, everyone's doing a lot of squaring of the books, if you will, because the, the contracts all start to roll over. And like I said, they're getting ready for the end of the quarter. We are getting ready for the end of our quarter, uh, the metals plan. Uh, we, we are, I'm telling you right now, I'm so excited. I've been working hard, working hard. We got some great things uh, that are going to be in the metals plan. And, and again, the plan, another record. And, and we've, been, we've been setting records now in the metals plan for the last probably two straight years in a row. But a, a new all-time record high as far as uh, the, not only just the number of people in the plan, but the volumes in the plan. And, and that just allows us to, to buy things even better. Uh, if you don't know about the metals plan, you can go out to our website at allamericangold.com uh, and click on the metals program icon, and you can read all the details about it. Uh, but it's a great way to invest, and you don't have to, uh, you know, obviously you listen to the show every day and you buy the specials and you do that. Uh, for other people, this is more of a, you take the thought press uh, process out of it. Uh, you put a, a dollar amount that you want to use. Give us the credit card. Uh, we, we hit your card every month. And then at the end of the quarter, we make mass buys for everybody in the plant. So whether uh, you're at the lowest amount, the minimum is $100 a month. There is no maximum. Uh, matter of fact, this quarter we picked up uh, the largest uh, 401k member or metals plan member uh, yet. Uh, and and we like I said we have we got people doing over three and four thousand dollars a month. Uh, a lot of people do you know a hundred or two hundred, three hundred, whatever the amount is. Uh, but the best part is every quarter you get four physical deliveries a year. 
So at the end of every quarter, we'd physically deliver uh, all of the medals. You can pick up in Colorado. Uh, you can pick up in Phoenix, or we ship it to you. Uh, there are no fees in the plans. There's no setup fee. There's no cancellation fee. There's no change this fee. Uh, you can cancel at any time. Uh, we have people where, hey, something came up. Maybe it was an unexpected expense. I, I always say, oh, I had to get tires on the car this month. And, you know, getting tires on the car isn't cheap anymore. And not that I, you know, not that it was ever cheap, but it's it's expensive, is especially if you got uh, those nicer tires. I mean, you can spend easily a couple thousand dollars just on tires, and it's amazing how much they can cost. But you can put your plan on hold. You can ask us to skip a month. I mean, it, we're it's easy. That was the whole premise: is easy. We want everybody to be able to afford to buy gold and silver. You know, when you think about uh, a twenty-dollar gold piece, a lot of people don't have twenty-two hundred dollars, and this is why we created the plan. But it, it does take the thought press out of it. Uh, you, you get four deliveries a year. You you you're, you put uh, some money aside. And the best part is you don't have to listen to us to get the specials because you're going to be getting the best price possible when we put these plans together. So and Joe, it, it's, it's a great way to do it. It's interesting, Joe, that Go you ahead, said, uh, you said uh, car tires. I was just going to say uh, Patriot Trading really kind of is your, your mechanic. you got to get a mechanic, and uh, you take your car in to get maintenance a couple times a year. Where that's kind of what the metals plan is uh, for you guys. 800 592 Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe Jaquin, Jason Walker. And, uh, you know, we had a lot, like I said, a lot of things happening. The central bank now with another new, new rule, uh, the inflation averaging. Uh, we talked about the dissenters uh, the on yesterday's show. And the, okay, thank you, Arlene. Uh, Arlene's passing me, she's passing me notes. Uh, and we didn't really know what they were dissenting about. Because normally, when you have a dissenter, uh, they're either, hey, I didn't want to raise rates, or uh, I, I wanted to lower rates. And, of course, rates are zero. And, and everyone knew, okay, you're not raising or lowering them. They were, they, it wasn't about the interest rate or the Fed's funds rate. So it was, we had to wait so these two gentlemen could clarify what they were dissenting about. So one of them, Harker, he, he dissents, but he was like, hey, you know what? I think we're being too dovish. So my guess is he is the one guy out of the 17 that said, hey, we may raise rates. And I think he had a, uh, I think he had a quarter of a point in 2022. So it was, it's not like the guy was some kind of super, super bear on it. But uh, that's my guess. Under these circumstances, the other dis- Joe. Under these circumstances, what's that, Jason? Under these circumstances, that's never going to happen. <laughs> right, right. Not, not Anybody that, that thinks the Fed is going to willingly raise rates is mistaken. And if they have to raise rates then you know they have really failed. Because what they're going to try to do is create a certain amount of inflation. Not too much, not too hot, not too cold, but just right, right? The, The old Goldilocks story, which they've never, ever pulled off. The other dissenter was Neil Kashkari. Of course, he was the guy that, um, I think it was Obama, it may have been Bush, Bush or Obama, uh, it, it is, uh, was tabbed to run the, the TARP, the bailout, for, uh, per, specifically for General Motors and, and Chrysler. Um, and he was in charge of that. Now he is the Minneapolis Federal Reserve head. He dissented the other way, saying, The central bank isn't dovish enough. And I'm going to tell you, uh, in reading through what he had to say, he's actually probably the one with the best perspective on what is really happening. So let let me share with you his belief. Number one, 
he knows the $120 billion a month the, the Fed is using to buy treasuries and to buy mortgage-backed securities isn't enough. And he willingly will tell you, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to buy more than that. Because he knows that, hey, we're going to buy those commercial-backed real estates and all that, right? We got plenty of stuff that we're going to be needing to, be, to buy when all these moratoriums come to an end. Then they were reading through uh, the Fed. They have this thing. It's called the Beige Book, and they, they report on their districts. And they're like, oh, well, in my district, this is what these companies are saying and one of the things he said is, it was all these companies are saying that they're having uh, problem finding workers, right? And we got a, a shortage. And you'll hear every once in a while, especially on Fox, they'll, they'll repeat this nonsense. There's no shortage of workers. But what Kaskari was saying was, listen, I started to call these companies. And here's what he found out. He goes, there's plenty of workers. They just won't work for what the company is offering to pay them. In other words, he goes, it's not even that they're not qualified. He goes, there's plenty of qualified workers, but these companies don't want to pay to have these people work. Because, again, the company's like, wait a minute, if I've got to actually pay people a livable wage, I'll go out of business. You know, and so he's got a very good idea i think a much better idea than some of these other guys they just want to read the data and accept it for what it is they don't want to dig into it even if it doesn't make any sense this guy's digging in and he's like you know what i found out was yeah this what i found out simply was these companies don't want to pay what's needed to be paid to get these workers so the only ones that are having trouble finding workers or companies that, uh, that simply just don't want to pay whatever it is, and whether that's a minimum wage, whether that's $12, $15. You know, remember remember when people were striking uh, and picketing like McDonald's and stuff because they wanted $15 an hour? Everyone's getting that. Everyone's getting and, and believe me, the problem is $15, Jason. No one can afford You can't live on your own at $15 an hour, right. and that's a way above what the minimum wage is. And I'll bet a lot of these companies can't pay it. And that's what he was talking about. That's exactly what Cash Curry said. He goes, he goes, really, though, when I talked to them, not only, you know, not, it wasn't just, hey, we don't want to pay that. It was, we, if we, we can't afford to pay that. Because if we pay that, we will no longer be able to price our products or whatever it may be, and, and essentially we'll, we'll, we'll put ourselves out of business because we won't be able to compete, and my guess is they won't be able to compete with Mexico uh, and China and all these other places. So it was very, very fascinating why he dissented was because he goes, we're getting top-level bad data, top-level bad data and if, if my friends here at the central bank will dig into this they're going to see we got a much bigger problem than what they think they've gotten you think about how dovish they were they just said we're not raising rates for it for at least three more years and most of them even their far out projections and, and you're thinking about hey listen in three years from today the federal budget deficit's going to be, what, $40 trillion? Maybe $45 trillion? And you think that we could ever raise rates? And everybody's starting to warn now. Dalio, Larry Fink from BlackRock, I shared with you with uh, his thoughts yesterday. They're all very concerned that whether the Fed wants rates to rise or not it's going to happen because they're worried everybody's turning their back on the dollar and I, it's listen it's not an avalanche but liken it to you know a, a boulder coming down this mountain and, and it's gaining momentum and and they're all worried this thing could turn into an avalanche 
because already people aren't buying the debt, right? The Fed's got to support us with $120 billion a month. Neil Kashkari says, hey, that's going to go higher. And, and everyone's wondering, who's going to be buying these things, especially when you say you want inflation to go even higher, which means buying these bonds is even a worse idea. I mean, a 10-year note pays you six-tenths of a percent. Even their, their manipulated inflation gauge is more than double that. So you, if anybody's out there buying a 10-year note, you're losing money. Real, you know, real, in, in real terms, real rates here in the United States are already negative. And everybody, you know, it's kind of like pulling on the string. Listen, it'll work for a while, but when it stops working, that bounce back up. I mean, could you imagine a, a rate where the U.S. government, heaven forbid, and I'm not talking anything outrageous. I'm not saying go back to when we used to pay 7 8% on a 10-year note. Just if they had to pay 2 Heaven forbid they'd have to pay 3%. The, the and Joe, US, you know, Joe, something, Joe. If, if, go ahead, Jason. If we have if we have another coronavirus shutdown in the winter, if that if that were to actually happen, these companies that can't pay fifteen dollars an hour, they won't even exist. And I, I well, this that. is the problem. We're seeing hundreds of thousands of businesses closing. Uh, the you look at jobless claims. We didn't even talk about jobless claims yesterday. Eight hundred and sixty thousand again, which is still a record it's above not the previous. Diminishing. That's still a record. What's above, that? That's still a record above the previous highs. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go all the way back. We had like, there was like one week in the '80s where they had like six hundred thousand. That used to be the all-time record high, uh, and now they're manipulating their count. They've changed the way they've counted the data for the last three weeks, and it's still eight hundred and sixty thousand. And get ready if there's no bailout of the airline industry, which we've got like what two weeks left. Come October first, you're going to see. Hundreds of thousands of layoffs uh, coming, and not just just for, not just from the airlines, but all the other ancillary uh, businesses uh, that support the airline. Matter of fact, we had an announcement. Uh, what was it? I think it was last night? It was Raytheon saying, "Hey, we're going to lay off fifteen thousand people because no one's flying," which means that they don't need plane parts. Right, you know, Raytheon, uh, they supply a lot of things to Boeing, but they also supply a lot of parts. You know, when you fly the planes a lot, they need maintenance, right? And parts break. And, and, and now all of a sudden, well, you know what? They're not flying. They, they don't need it. You know, people, they're not ordering, you know, these parts that they normally order, so we got to stop making them. And these are, these are the, you know, the trickle-down things that you don't think about. You always, you know, you think about airlines, all you think about is American and Delta and United. It's a lot bigger than that. And it's going to be interesting. I, I just thought it was worth sharing with you the two dissenters. One of them uh, essentially getting buried by the other one. Kashkari saying, hey, my, my other friend that dissented and said that we, we were being too uh, dovish, he's not doing his job. Now, he didn't say it like that. I'm saying it like that. Right, because you know, Kashkari is saying, "Hey, listen, I dug into this stuff. I just didn't accept these reports at face value because they didn't make sense to me. So I started calling these companies myself, and he found out a whole different story that they can't afford to hire the workers, but they can't afford not to hire the workers. But if they hire the workers, they're going to go out of business anyway. And he says, listen, there's a lot more companies that are going to go out of business. And, Joe, you know something? Uh, something that people don't realize when you, when you talk about these layoffs and these jobs that are being lost, when you create a job, not only do you have somebody that, uh, that wasn't working, now is working, it creates uh, everyone around that job gets busier, and, and it kind of feeds on itself. So when you lay off a bunch of people – the people that are still working, that were working with those people that are laid off, they become less busy, and suddenly their positions become less important, and it just everything just slows down. So when you hear it, hey thousands, guys, thousands of people, guys, I can I, I can attest to the, the the pay. I'm I'm searching for a job right now. Um, I'm noticing a lot of the jobs have a field in the application for for salary expectations, 
And I'm based on my experience so far over a month and a half, I'm, I'm seeing that that is what they're using as an initial differentiator. And I've, I've started not, not putting anything in that field, but I'm seeing the ones that do post uh, salary ranges for, for what I know I do and what, what that job should pay. It's anywhere from 80 to 60% less than, uh, than what it was uh, six months ago, a year ago. And that's, by the way, that's Brian joining us as well. He, he and Jason uh, do our, our front range show in the afternoons up there in Colorado. And it's so funny, Brian, I appreciate you chiming in. This is exactly what Kashkari was saying in his dissent. Now, we didn't know it on Wednesday. We just knew he dissented. We didn't know why. But now he's come out and says, hey, listen, here's the problem. Companies need to hire, right? They've got they, they, they've got positions that need to be filled. Unfortunately, because of all the money they're spending on COVID, they can't afford to hire the worker. Either way, they're gonna go out, they're gonna go out, they're gonna go under. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 951 Gold showing some more strength here as the day rolls on. Uh, 1961. 1961 here on gold up uh, almost $17 to the ounce. Silver uh, back above $27. The Dow's down 130 The Nasdaq's down 160 uh, And just a very interesting perspective. And I thought it was worth sharing because I feel like this is a, this is just my personal opinion. I feel like one guy really was doing his job and said, you know what, I'm not believing this nonsense that these companies can't find workers. And then what he actually found out was when I started talking to the business owner, they got problems. Right, because a lot of them, hey, you know what? I've had to institute all these policies, you know, six feet apart, blah blah blah. The sanitizers, the masks, the this, the that, the social distancing, the testing, and, and there's a lot of cost associated with COVID. And consequently, I've got these openings, but nobody will work for me for what I can afford to pay. And then they went on and said, the problem is if I don't fill these jobs, I'm going to go out of business. And if I fill the job for what these people want to be paid, I'm going to go out of business. Either way, I'm going out of business. So it was, it was a fascinating dissent. And again, we normally don't see dissents ever from the central bank. I mean, you go back through all of their meeting histories for decades. And it's like 95 to 98%, it's always unanimous. When it's not unanimous, which I think's only been maybe a dozen times in the last 40 years. So you think about they meet every six weeks. And I'm telling you, less than, than a dozen times has there even been a single dissenter. Jody, and of that, this is, Joe, I think, do you think, they have to have I, I think a guy, it's Joe? only the third time, Jason. It's only the third time we've had more than one dissenter. But usually when they dissent, they dissent the same way. Right? This time they dissented in totally opposite directions. It was just fascinating. Do you think they just have to have a guy so that in the future they can just say they were right? <laughs> it's just have one guy. Well, it could be, right? Do the old Goldman Sachs and call half your clients and tell them to sell. Call the other half and tell them to buy. And guess what? You'll be right half the time. I, but could Joe, be. I don't know. But Joe, I, I, I remember just that movie. When, I remember that movie, uh, World War Z. I, I, it wasn't a good movie. But there was Brad Pitt. and uh, it's about zombies. But they were in Israel, and they had, the, they had this, like, uh, council of ten people that make the important decisions if things go wrong. And if everybody in the room, the first nine guys, all agree to the solution, the tenth guy has to disagree, and then they, they actually spend money and, and prepare for some situation that was not accounted on. It's, it's almost the same thing with the dissenters you're talking about. It, it's just, yeah. I, I just thought it was so interesting. And the fact of the matter is, uh, and I think this just by opinion, I think he was taking shots. Because, you know, Kashkari is not a true, you know, the true banker, which is an academic. He's not an academic, 
right? You know, you think about Bernanke and Janet Yellen and, and Alan Greenspan, right? These, these were academics. Uh, that's not his forte, right? He was more of a Wall Street guy. Uh, now here at the Federal Reserve and, and really taking shots at him saying, are any of you believing this data? Because I didn't believe it. And when I actually looked into it, we got a much bigger problem. That's why he said, we're not doing enough. And I think it's very worrisome. You know, there hasn't been another round of stimulus. Uh, Arizona, the three hundred, the extra $300 is already over. They're out of the money. You know, like I said, I told everybody, that was FEMA money. They just diverted some of that money. And the states that started early, they're already done with it. And so it's going to be very, very interesting to see how how significant of a bailout that Kashkari thinks is going to be needed. And again, I'm already on record. Listen, I think the central bank's balance sheet by this time next year is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve trillion, and it could be bigger. But I'm thinking twelve. Which that means uh, that's another five trillion, not quite a doubling, but. That's a lot. Right now, Jay Powell said, hey, listen, I'll, I'll own up to about $1.5 trillion. You know, he's saying we're going to buy $120 billion a month, so I'll, I'll give you $8.5 trillion. But I'm telling you, 12 And I think Neil Kashkari is, is on board with what I'm thinking. And so it's going to be interesting how all of this plays out. And then you got to think about what Ray Dalio and Larry Fink were warning about. Hey! Are people, are, are people now starting to not buy treasuries? And the fact of the matter is, when you look at the second largest economy in the world in dollar terms, the Chinese, who, by the way, have you been seeing? They're starting to report some awfully impressive numbers. I'll give you some good news. Soybean farmers got to be elated. Massive purchases are back from the Chinese. They got to feed their people. Uh, they seem to have, uh, you know, if you when you have the ability to fully lock down everybody, uh, the coronavirus seems to have uh, all but disappeared from China, so, you know, amazingly. And uh, they're, they're rocking and rolling again and climbing that ladder, and they're doing more and more and more business with that renembi, with the, you know, the Chinese yuan, whatever, Whatever word you want to use, they are using their own currency. And guess what? Other countries are following. And they're saying, okay, right? Hey, you want to buy soybeans from us? We'll take the renembi. We'll do it. Yeah, you, know, you, you, need, you need pork? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't want to use dollars anymore? Okay. So what does that mean, though? A lot of people don't understand what's the repercussion of that. All of these countries... They keep their money. They, you know, and I, I, war- I tell this to people all the time, like Apple and Microsoft, they don't keep all that money in the bank. They buy bonds and hold them because it's, it's safer. They'd rather lose a little bit of money than actually keep it in the bank. That's how worried they are that banks could go under. They're, they don't keep their – you think Apple keeps their billions of dollars in the bank? No way. And same thing with these countries. And so what they do is they buy the bonds of the nations that they need to buy stuff with. And what's happening now is we're seeing a shift that we haven't seen before of this significance. Where countries now are saying, you know what? I don't need as many dollars as I used to. Because I'm doing a lot more trade in other currencies, so I need to buy more Chinese bonds because now I need renembis now because you know this is this is how we're doing, and that's what Ray Dalio and Larry Fink have been warning everybody about. Patriot Radio News Hour. I got a great special. It's not big, but it's it's a good one. We'll talk about that next. Eight hundred nine five one. Zero five nine two. I've been working for the last two weeks, and this is the best I could do. Uh, we're going to run an Indian special. I've only got twenty packages. 
the package has both the $10 and the $5 Indian. So you're going to get both Indians. Uh, the $5, that's the Lady Liberty uh, with the Indian headdress on. The $5, which is my favorite coin. I think it's the best coin that we ever made. Uh, that's the male Indian with the uh, ward headdress. Uh, and it had that incused design, which they actually carved into the coin. It's the only time the, the, the United States has done this. They actually had it, you know, it was engraved. It was carved into the coin. And remember, uh, the last flu plague, right? And what was that, 1918? They thought the Indians were carrying the plague in the grooves. And so they stopped minting them. Uh, so on all of them, didn't matter if it was accused or not, the $10, or the $5 Indians, uh, they were the, the uh, fractional coins that went with the saint. So Teddy Roosevelt thought the liberty wasn't majestic enough, so he had Augusta St. Gaudens commission the, the coin, and so we had a new $20 gold piece. So they said, let's have new fractionals. And the fractionals were the Indians, uh, but they stopped minting them uh, because of the, the flu pandemic. And then only minted them a few more times in the later 20s. And again, one more I think one more time like in 1932. So there, there's not that many of, of the Indians out there. So I've got 20 packages. You get one of each. You get the $10 Indian. You get the $5 Indian. The two of them combined, it's $1,700. And fifty dollars. I wish I could do more. We, they're just not out there. Uh, and then when you got to go up and, and pay for a, a better quality or a nicer coin, the premiums get really expensive. Uh, so take advantage here. The ten and five dollar Indian set, seventeen hundred and fifty dollars at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And and Jason, this is this is a neat one. Yeah, you know, almost, they, almost three quarters of an Indians ounce of gold. A lot. Three quarters of yeah. an ounce of gold, essentially. That's that's pretty cool because you know we, we do quarters and half dollar sales uh, week after week, but the, to have the the quarter ounce and the half ounce uh, on the same you know special, and it's it's a uh, you know a little little cheaper than getting the the full ounce, and you get two coins. You get two coins. You get some fractional. Plus, they're the Indians, and the Indians, and and, and again, they always are more expensive. And remember, there was this uh, there was this run on Indians in the mid. 2000s like from about started in like from 04 to about 09 where the indians went nuts and you were paying more for a ten dollar indian than you were for a twenty dollar gold piece so this is this is one of those things where uh when when somebody you know starts getting behind these indians and buys them all up uh you can see Really, really big price swing. So the fact that they're uh, this competitive with the $10 Liberty and the $5 Liberty uh, it just just makes good value. And plus, they're, they're cool looking coins, which is always fun. 800-951-0592, the $10 and $5 Indian set at $1,750. And we, we only have 20 uh, and there's two lines open. So if you want to jump on those, do it. By the way, I just told you gold popped again here. Now we're back uh, back above 1960. Nancy Pelosi, crazy Nancy's back. Yesterday, word broke that President Trump would be willing to go to $1.5 trillion on a stimulus package. Nancy Pelosi has responded. Uh, she was on Bloomberg TV saying that they absolutely no deal we want 2.2 trillion and that's as low as we're going that's it if you don't like it too bad we want money to bail out what she called the states and the locals and that it is critical that adding adding that something is not necessarily better than nothing so remember her, some of her Democrats broke ranks, worked out a deal with some Republicans on a bill that was going to be about $1.5 trillion. Word was the president said he could get behind that. Today, Nancy Pelosi said no. 
We're not dealing. Uh, I'd rather give everybody nothing if I don't get bailouts for the states that, that in cities that I want to get bailed out. Uh, so, again, not very good news for the people that are unemployed right now. Uh, and thinking about uh, pay and all of those things, what Neil Kashkari was warning about, and now Nancy Pelosi, apparently we're going to go even long. I don't know how long we can go uh, before this thing gets really ugly, Jason. Sometime after the election is my guess. <laughs> That's what, you know what, I, again, I hate to say it, but doesn't it feel that way? Hey, right. listen, as soon as the election's over, uh, we'll do something. But I, but, but I just, and I just, I don't know it, but it sure just feels like the Democrats are like, hey, whatever we can do to help our, our candidate try to defeat Donald Trump, we'll do it, and we don't really care about what the you know what it does to the economy what it does to families i mean it's devastating when when and i you're think, not Joe, I working think things are, and I you think can't things provide are more, uh, things are more controlled my my opinion the way i see it things are much more controlled anyways i think they're already trying to figure out who their 2024 candidate's going to be because i think the democrats already have it in there uh, trump's going to win this one and uh, they're going to crash the market on on a republican like they always do i don't like your plans i don't like it when you but it sure does make sense, right? I think that, listen, I agree. I think Trump's still going to win, even though they're showing crazy numbers right now. And I think that they're going to burn the country down, and it's going to be a really, really chaotic next four years. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two golds uh, at the top here today. Uh, Nineteen sixty one silver, uh, twenty seven dollars in change. The Dow's at the lows of the days now. So we're st- normally what we've seen lately: Dow up, gold up; Dow down, gold down. Today seems like we've hit this divergence. Today, uh, the Dow is down a couple hundred points. Uh, but yet gold's up, you know, sixteen, seventeen dollars, and, and again, I, I just felt that, you know, last week we hit a very important, uh, like quadruple bottom down here near that nineteen hundred that I thought was going to give us an opportunity to jump back across the the, the two thousand threshold, and news of Nancy Pelosi again refusing to deal here. Uh, and then the comments out of Neil Kashkari about his dissent, and not just the dissent, the facts behind it, agreeing with me and saying, we're not raising rates ever. Yes, this talk of runaway inflation, ghost stories, he called it, right? They, they, they don't uh, want to be for The only way rates are going higher is, is, is that avalanche happening where all of a sudden, uh, all these countries, like I said, they don't need to hold dollars, and and we have a we have a dollar problem, and and a financial another banking type problem, and uh, like I said, uh, we're 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 not there yet. It's just it's just starting. That boulder is just starting to roll down the mountain. We've got twelve of the packages left. The ten and five dollar Indian. You get both coins at seventeen fifty this morning at eight hundred nine five one. Zero five nine two, and before we let you go, Jason, I got to ask you: Did you see the Minneapolis City Council, who they voted to defund the police, and now crime has gone through the roof there, and they they called in the police chief to to their meeting to say, "Why aren't you doing something?" Did you see it? I saw some of that. Yeah, I, I had uh, a few things. I was looking at uh, a few articles. Had a few guys uh, talking to me about it. Yeah, I, I saw that. That's I mean, <laughs> the police chief's looking at him like, dude, are you, what? And it was so funny. Is one guy on the council? He must have been uh, a Republican. Just literally chewed apart the you know because there's always one person that's the head of the city uh, of the city council, and just started ripping them going. Are you out of your mind? You were oh, you were out here uh, six weeks ago defunding the police, basically telling the whole city, go ahead and, and commit all the crime you want. We're not going to have law enforcement go after you at all. And, of course, the police chief's like, listen, 100 officers have left. 
everybody's working overtime. I got more patrols out, but but you've unleashed the lion. You know, it's I didn't do this. You did this. It's it's amazing. Uh, and I just find it, I think this is going to happen everywhere. I think well, the, and, and this Joe, thing I've, I've is, said it before, Joe, that I, I believe that the people versus the police narrative that they're putting on the national news is paving the way for uh, Trump or whatever president to bring the military into these cities and show show everybody what's going to happen if you misbehave. I, th- I think that's what this is heading to. Uh, well, I, and again, uh, another police shooting here where uh, police officers were shot at kind of drive-by style at a traffic light. Uh, this is the second time this week. Uh, it, it's it's getting it's getting a little little crazy out there. That's all. That's always a good time to add a little more gold to the portfolio. 800 951 zero five nine two uh thank you guys so much listen have a great weekend try to have a great weekend take care of yourself god bless everybody we'll be back next week